thank you, everlasting Father. Lord, we give you all the glory. For we are prayed with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Anyone that has experienced a faithful walk, come on, shout hallelujah. Come and shout hallelujah. If God has truly been faithful to you, come and celebrate him. Make a joyful noise to 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 him. Come and celebrate him in any heart that you know how to. Come and celebrate your maker. Celebrate your savior. Celebrate your deliverer. Celebrate your God. The one that has preserved you. The one that has met you at the different services here. Come and celebrate him. Worship him. Exalt him. Praise him. Make a joyful noise to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today we are looking at a topic titled, The Faithful God. The Faithful God. I look at this and I see it as a large topic that cannot be finished. Because if you have to look at the faithfulness of God, come on, we'll be here for the next one month. But briefly, in just a few minutes, we want to see the faithful God. If you are with your Bible in the house, please open with me to Deuteronomy 7 verse 9. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9. The Bible says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him, and keep his commandment to a thousand generations. says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, who is God? The Lord thy God, he is God. The faithful God. How do we know he's faithful? Because he keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him. And keep his commandments to a thousand generations. This God is a faithful God. He keeps his promises. He keeps to his vows. When God breaks, makes a promise, he keeps to it. Has he ever promised you anything and he never fulfilled it? He is a promise-keeping God. He keeps his promises, his vows to a thousand generations. He is God. The God that we are talking about is a God that is thorough in performance of his duty. When God is doing something, he is thorough. If he wants to deliver you, he delivers you fully. If he wants to save you, he saves you fully. Yoruba people call him Agbanin Lagbaton. He doesn't deliver one halfway. He doesn't save you halfway. My people will say that if you want to make a cloth, let me go ahead and say it in Yoruba. He goes all the way to help you. He is the helper of the helpless. He is the one that does his job thoroughly. Look into your life and look at the things that God has done in your life. He doesn't do a half-done job. He does his work perfectly. That is the God that we are talking about. He performs his duty thoroughly. When he comes to fight your battle, he wipes away everyone that is contending against you. When he comes to help you, he takes over the load entirely from you and he carries the load upon himself. He takes the yoke upon himself and say, come on boy, you ride on my shoulder. Let me take the load upon myself. That is the faithful God that we are talking about. When he comes to your aid, he comes to your aid in his full ability, in his full power. He comes to perform his duty thoroughly in your life. Has God performed any wonderful duty in your life in the last one year? If that is true, come and shout, God is faithful. Let me hear you shout, God is faithful. The last time, say, God is faithful. The God that we are talking about, the faithful God, the God that is true to his word. He's true to his promises. He's true to his vows. When he makes a promise, he keeps to it. When he says a word, he stands by you with his word and make sure that none of his words falls to the ground without, you know, being accomplished. He is the God that speaks forth a word and he makes sure that it comes to pass. Has he spoken forth a word in your life? 
Has he made a vow in your life in the last one year? Has he not been able to fulfill it? It's not a God that makes an empty promise. It's not a God that makes an empty vow. This God that we are talking about is the God that keeps to his promise. He's the God that keeps to his vows. He's the one that backs up whatever he has said and ensures that it is done. This same God that we are talking about, the Bible says for all his promises, they are yea and they are amen. When he says a thing, it is so. It is done. No power, no God, nothing on earth, created or made or fabricated, can change that thing. That is the faithful God that we are talking about. The God that we are talking about today, he is a reliable God. He is a dependable God. He is a God that we can trust and go to sleep and snore, knowing that he does not change when he has spoken. That is the faithful God that we are talking about today. When he says go to sleep, he will say go to sleep while he neither sleeps nor slumber. He is the one that keeps watch over us when we are sleeping. He is the one that is fighting battles while you and I are snoring. He is the one that is fighting our battles even when we don't know. That is the God, the faithful God, the reliable God, the dependable God, the trustable God that we have come to praise today. Come on, celebrate this God and shout hallelujah. Come on, celebrate this God and shout hallelujah. This is the God that when other powers, when other gods come face to face with him, like Dagon came face to face with him, they fall down and they are broken into pieces. This is the God that when the problems in your life, the challenges in your life come face to face with him, they are broken and crushed into pieces. Their power is taken from them in the face of this faithful God. Come on, celebrate this God and shout hallelujah. This is a faithful God. He is a reliable God. He is a dependable God. Look at those sicknesses that have come face to face with him. Look at those problems that, that you have brought to him face to face. Look at many times that you have run into the house and spoken to him about the things that were challenging you. And he made those problems to be as though they never existed. He took power from the powerful that were, that were intimidating you and made them powerless. And put them to shame just because of you. Has this God not been faithful? Has this God not been glorious? Is this God not trustable? Is it not dependable? Is it not reliable? Come on, say, God, you are faithful. Come on, say, God, you are faithful. He is a faithful father. I am happy that I belong to this faithful God. I am happy that I belong to this faithful father. That I belong to this reliable father. Come and celebrate the King of Kings. Hallelujah. How does God demonstrate his faithfulness in our lives? We can look through the scriptures and see many instances that are there. And these situations are very, very similar with our situation. Because we want to have enough time to praise God and thank him. We will look at just a few of them. Praise the Lord. If you look in Matthew 15, Matthew 15 verse 22 to 28, please you will write down and go look after Matthew 15 verse 22 to 28. There was a story of the woman of Canaan that came to Jesus. Obviously, this woman wasn't even born again. She came to Jesus asking that God, that Jesus will heal her daughter. And Jesus said to her, I cannot give the bread of the children to dogs. But when she claimed God's promises and tried to, you know, hold Jesus to ransom, said even dogs, they eat from the crumbs. They eat from the crumbs. There are many people that have come into the house that are not even born again. But they came to the house and they experienced God. They experienced the crumbs. And these crumbs turned their life around. And then they said to the Lord, I said, if you could give me this kind of a crumbs and they could turn my life around, then I will follow you forever. Is there anybody that, that, that experienced that in the house? When he gave you crumbs, you were like, God, if this is the crumbs that you give to dogs, then I better become a child. And then you became a child. And he began to give you the bread that is meant for children. Come and shout hallelujah. God is a faithful God. Even when we are not faithful. Even when we are not qualified. Even when we are not, we are not met every requirement. God has remained faithful. And he still gives to us what he has promised. He still gives to us what we beg of him to do. 
And when we even experience just the crumbs, we are like, this is just too much. And then when we come right into him and become a child of his, he begins to give us bread. And then he begins to satisfy our daily need. And he begins to put bread on our table regularly. And then our stories become a new thing entirely. And he changes our story for good. Has God been so good to somebody? Has he been putting bread on somebody's table? Has he changed your name from a sinner to a saint? Has he turned your story around? Come on, say thank you, Savior of my soul. Come on, say thank you, Savior of my soul. Thank you, Savior of my soul. Thank you for changing my story. Thank you for putting bread on my table. Thank you for saving my soul and making me to become a child of yours. And so if you're in the house today and you're not yet saved, then I beg of you, crumbs is not filling. Go for the bread. Go for what? Go for the bread. And if you have got to go for the bread, then you must become a child of the Most High God. Quickly, we'll look at another story in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 to 7. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 to 7. The story is a very familiar story. The story of Hannah. Hannah was a wife that was loved by her husband. Hannah was loved by her husband and was a preferred choice. Nevertheless, Hannah had no child. And because Hannah had no child, the second wife mocked her. The second wife provoked her. But says, her adversary provoked her so that she wept and she could not eat. I don't know if this is a picture of somebody. That their adversaries, your adversaries were provoking you so. Your adversaries were mocking you. Your adversaries made life unbearable for you. They made life so for you that you wept so much and you could not eat. Even when there is food on your table, you could not open your mouth to eat. But this faithful God stepped into your situation. He said to you, weep no more, my child. He said to you, weep no more, my child. And he gave to you that thing that you were crying for. And your story became a changed story. Has God done this to somebody? Did God wipe away the tears of somebody? Did God come into somebody's case and say, weep no more, my child? Come on, if God did that to you, say, God, you are faithful. Come on, say, God, you are faithful. God came into the situation of Hannah and quieting her adversaries. And the adversaries that had been making noise, that had been mocking her, God told them, keep quiet. May you know. God told them, keep quiet. May you know. God stepped into the storm of Hannah's life and changed her stories. Now when Hannah sees food, she can eat and eat and eat. And God said, weep no more, child. I saw how many people that God has wiped away their tears this year. I saw how many people that God took away sorrows from their life last year. They came into the house weeping. They came into the house sobbing. They came into the house so with adversaries mocking them. But the master said, weep no more, my child. And that tears he took away forever. And today you can laugh and you can praise the most high God. Come and celebrate this faithful God. Worship him. Say, God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. God bless you. You may be seated. Another story that we will look at is the story of a certain woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, there was a certain woman whose husband was dead. And the debtors were coming to her. They were almost going to trade her children for the debts. They were almost going to take the only reason that she's smiling for the debts that her husband was owing. She was in a helpless situation. Then she ran to the prophet of God, Elisha, and God solved her story. That God solved her problem and changed her story. How many of us ran to the Elisha of our time and told him this is our problem? This is our situation. I was so happy when I heard her testimony that she ran to the Elisha of our time and God changed our story. So many of us people were ready to take away our joy, the only hope that we had, and give us, you know, sorrow, full sorrow in exchange. But we ran onto the Elisha of our time. And he just said the word of God. And we obeyed. And God turned our story around. And God solved the problem. And we now had excess. I said, God is a faithful father. God is a faithful father. He is the helper of the helpless. 
is the one that can turn a man of with death, plenty death into a man who, who is now a millionaire, a billionaire, a man having surplus. Come on, shout hallelujah. Another story that we will look at was that of Peter. When Peter in Matthew 14 verse 30, Matthew 14 verse 30, when Peter was sinking, Peter was sinking because Peter was afraid. Peter looked around him and saw the storms coming. Peter looked around him even when Jesus was by him. Peter looked around him and Peter saw that the storm was so much and the waves of the sea were so much and then the faith left and then fear came in and Peter began to sink. How many of us were in that situation that even when God was by our side, fear crept in into our hearts and then we began to sink. But Jesus was at on time to help us. Quickly he stretched forth his hand to you like he did to Peter. And he said, come on son, come on daughter, you will not sink. Come out, come out. That storm will not sink you. That sea will not bury you. And he, delight, he, he delivered you from that trouble. And he came right on time. At the nick of time. When you were about sinking and dying. And he came and he helped you. Can I see such people wave their hands to Jesus? And say, thank you for being my helper. The help of the helpless. Thank you for not allowing me to sink in that trouble. Thank you for not allowing me to sink in that trouble. Father, Lord, I praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to look at Jonah. Jonah chapter 2. If you are there, you are going to please open to that with me. Because we will conclude on that note. Because we want to give him a high praise. We want to worship him. We want to tell him he's been faithful to us. Jonah chapter 2. If you look at from verse 1 to 10, from verse 1 to 10, I will just pick some few verses. Jonah chapter 2, from verse 1 to 10, I'll just pick a few, few verses. In verse 2, said, and, and said, okay, from verse 1, then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly, and cried, and said, I cried by reason of my affliction to the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. I don't know if there were some people that were in the belly of the fish that were in the belly of hell last year and they came into the house and they said because God is here they cried unto the Lord out of the belly of hell out of the midst of hell and the Lord heard their cry if there are such people in the house they said thank you for hearing my cry thank you for hearing my cry Father we praise you the Bible says in verse 5 that, that the waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The death closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. Maybe you had a particular problem that, that you could not even pray again. Your soul was so, so down and distressed. But yet the Lord saw your innermost cry and he still came to your help. And he still delivered you out of the belly of hell. And said, daughter, son, you will not sink. This fish, this belly of the hell will not swallow you. And he came right on time, at the nick of time. And he came and delivered you. And he brought you out of that belly of the fish. And brought you out to sing. And brought you out to serve him. And brought you out to rejoice. And brought you out to sing. And brought you out to be a beauty to behold. And brought you out and changed your story. He changed your garment. He changed your face. He changed your entire look. And made things become a glorious thing for you. Is this God not glorious? Is this God not faithful? Please let's be on our feet right now as we worship this God. Let's be on our feet right now as we worship God. Look at the things that He has done for you and worship Him. Enyini Baba, Toto Baba, Enyi Baba, Toju Baba, Enyini Baba. So Baba, hey, Baba, so
praise him for the faithfulness of his that you have experienced. Worship him, exalt him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice to him and bless him. Lift up your voice to him and bless him. Give him thanks for healing. Give him thanks for deliverance. Give him thanks for lifting. Give him thanks for being your defense. Give thanks to him. Give thanks to him. Give thanks to him. Give thanks to him. Thank you, Jesus. We give praise to you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. I perceive in my spirit that this might just be the time that some people have been waiting for to have their status change. That woman, when she first got to Jesus, was called a dog. But by the time Jesus was done with her, she had become a daughter of Zion. She came to Jesus, a wretched sinner. She left Jesus, a glorified saint. Is there someone in the house this morning? You want to say, Jesus, I yield the whole of my life to you. I surrender my life to you totally today. I want to accept you as my Lord and my Savior. As all eyes are closed, I just want you to indicate by lifting up your right hand, I just want to pray with you. You want to yield your life to him, please lift up your right hand. God bless you for that hand. God bless you for that hand. God bless you. Any other person you just want to say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. God bless you for those hands. Thank you. Thank you. Heaven is rejoicing over you. The Bible says that there is great rejoicing in heaven over a single sinner that turns away from his sin. God bless you. God bless you. Since there are not so many, I think I just want to lay my hands on you and ask that the grace of God attend to you. If you raised up your hand, please just quickly come to, to the front of the altar. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. And quickly, while they are coming, can we just stretch forth our hands towards God's servants that God has used to bless us in the word this afternoon. Let's pray for her that the Almighty God will refresh her. Let's ask that the oil of God will not run dry upon her life. In the mighty name of Jesus. If God spoke to you through her, if God blessed you through her this afternoon, please stretch forth your hands towards her and pray that the almighty god will renew his grace upon her life and father we thank you for these your children that have heard your word this afternoon and they are saying yes to jesus lord as they have come before you unashamed and they have come to stand before you without minding what people will say jesus you said anyone that will not be ashamed of you before men you said before your father also you will stand unashamed of that person. I ask for these children of yours, the Father, today you will accept them in the beloved, in the mighty name of Jesus. You will forgive them their sins. You will write their names in the book of life. In the name of Jesus. 
and father as i lay my hands upon them i pray that the grace to remain your children father please bestow upon them in the mighty name of jesus the grace to run this race to the end lord please release upon them in the mighty name of jesus none of these ones will fall away in the mighty name of jesus none of these ones will turn back from following you in the mighty name of jesus thank you almighty father we glorify your name in jesus mighty name we have prayed if you are still excited you serve the faithful god come and put your hands together for him please attend to them inside attend to them inside please attend to them inside praise the lord now we're done with the service but there's only one segment remaining which might not be for everybody god specifically gave this instruction and we told us last week one of the prophecies that god gave to our father and the lord is that some of the miracles notable miracles of last year were going to be repeated this year and god said we should do this today that those that he visited specially last year as they come dancing in thanksgiving to the altar as many as are still in the group believing for such a miracle they will dance behind them to the altar i read a scripture luke chapter one and um, i still want us to stand praise god luke chapter one be getting ready in any case if this does not concern you in any way you are free to go praise the lord and the angel said unto our verse 30 fear not mary for thou hast found favor with god and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name jesus the mary verse 34 the mary said unto the angel how shall this be seeing i know not a man and the angel answered and said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of god verse 30 says very very important and behold thy cousin elizabeth she also had conceived a son in her old age and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren the angel was saying to mary in case you don't have enough faith to believe that the promise of god for you will come to fulfillment take a look at the life of your cousin elizabeth the one that people said was barren she's now carrying a miracle the application of that is very simple as those that god have visited are coming out dancing god is also saying to you in case you don't have faith enough to believe that i can do for you what i have promised you just take a look at those people that are dancing the same thing i have done for them i will do for you mary went to the house of her cousin and by the time i don't know how many days or how many weeks she spent there by the time she was going back home her own tummy also was beginning to shoot out because there was a replication of the miracle that god did for the cousin as many of us that will come in faith rejoicing with those that god have visited before long many people will also accompany you to this same altar rejoicing with you for what the lord has done in the mighty name of jesus four categories that we're going to call because we know uh, we don't have all the time the first category please don't sit down except you don't have enough strength to see i mean to stand be dancing even if it's not your own turn you can be dancing where you are there were some people that up until last year people called them barren but they cried out to god and god blessed them with children do we have any of such in the house any of such can i see your hands even if it's only one that is around anybody like that all right so we're going to sing those ones will be coming out if you have your baby with you you can dance out to your baby but the testimony of that sister on monday that said she was being troubled in her home because no child was coming and she came here and god answered her prayer god blessed her with a child 
as you come behind them according to the time of life nine months from now there will be rejoicing in your home home too, in the name of jesus so please alpha omega alpha omega you are worthy of my praise today you are worthy of my praise alpha alpha omega alpha omega for those that are carrying their own right now i'm sure this place won't contain us now listen to me there is nothing the devil can do about it god has given that pregnancy to you you will simply deliver in the name of jesus now those of us that have danced out in faith believing god for a repeat of this miracle in your life i'd like you to just find a place to kneel before the altar of the lord just find a place to kneel Find a place to kneel. Manke seto rihamba runge shente riyama lakaida. Imbrimos kayata maliam para. Intramos ke yete rimba sunde. Maliam karuma sunte yerima sunde lea. 
Maluka iprimoske yeterima zunda lehamba ruga shinta. For it was like this that Hannah knelt before the altar of the Lord. And the prophet of God, the servant of God on the altar, spoke to her and said, The handmaid of the Lord, be it unto you according to your request. I stand under God's authority and I stand in agreement with prophecy to declare unto you from this altar, The handmaids of the Lord, let it be unto you according to your request. I said, let it be unto you according to your request. I said, let it be unto you according to your request. In the name of Jesus. According to the time of life. Before this year runs out. On this same altar. Your own children too will be carried. I said, your children will be received. In the name of Jesus. May I extend my prayers as well to as many as are watching us on the internet right now and they are saying, God, I kneel in faith also. Even though in my room, in my office, but I kneel before your altar, I ask my Lord and my God that the same spirit that is at work in this sanctuary, let it also be at work in their life wherever they are. In the mighty name of Jesus. By this act of thanksgiving, I declare open every womb that either to have been shot in the name of Jesus. I don't care what doctors have said, whether they said it is cyst, whether they say it's fibroid, or they said there is low sperm count, whatever reason they have given for your inability to have a child up until now. I declare that reason now and void in the name of Jesus. Your children have come. Receive them. Go back home with them. And come back with them to give thanks to the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And Father, for all these wonderful blessings that we have today as reference to your faithfulness we pray for every one of them may they live to fulfill destiny in the mighty name of jesus father we are asking oh god that all through their lifetime these ones will be good references oh god to your faithfulness and to your goodness in the mighty name of jesus when people are looking for a way to be blessed they will pray and say father the way you are blessing these children bless me also in the mighty name of jesus thank you almighty father we glorify your name in jesus mighty name we are praying and let the church shout hallelujah please just the same altar before which you have come to kneel drop your thanksgiving offering and then go back you deserve the glory i'm sure many of us have heard it time and time again that things are hard they said things are hard. There, there are no jobs anywhere. And unemployment rate in Nigeria is just shooting up every day, every day. But I'm sure there were people that came in here and they said, God, all I need is just a job. And God provided with a job. Some of us without any application. Some of us, the positions we applied for, we upgraded. And you just know that it is God. Are there people like that in the house this afternoon? Alright, so it's your turn to come. Listen to me. I don't care. They may have said that there are no vacancies anywhere. But all I know is that as far as God is concerned, there is nothing like no vacancy. Do your hand over your head like this. What can you feel? There's a void. There's some empty space there. That means there is room for occupation at the top. And God will make a space for you in the name of Jesus. So as many of us that cried to God here and God gave you jobs, keep come out dancing and then those that are believing God to do the same in their lives, please join them and to come.
going to be upgraded very soon and those that have danced out be living in for jobs very very soon as a matter of fact some of you before today is over you will get on letter of employment how God is going to do it I don't know but believe in God the Bible says that believe in the Lord your God so shall you be established believe also in his name. so shall you perform. about this time tomorrow the prophet said that at the gate of Samaria, as surely as the Lord lives, you will dance out with your testimony. I call on our daddy for prayers. Just give break, please. Protocol. Hallelujah. Open your eyes, everybody. Look around. Turn, turn and look around. Don't you think that God we serve is a faithful God. Is a faithful God. Those of you that he has provided job for, raise up your hand. No, if you have got a job already, not those who are looking for a job now. Those, see, look at them. Within a year, Hallelujah. Those of you who are trusting God for a job, raise up your hand. I decree. In the name that's above every other name. Every embargo on employment is lifted because of you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. You are a faithful God. You are an excellent God. You are a reliable God. Thank you for what you have done. Ah, we, we can see. We can see. Various people. Father, this is your work. This is your work. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, Father, thank you. Father within a month, to this time everybody that is looking for a job today God will give you a job and those who have been given job God will permanent your job thank you very much Father in Jesus mighty name we pray keep the testimonies coming in because I know from today, testimonies will begin to roll in. I see so many of you that danced out in faith becoming employers of labor. In the name of Jesus. Now this one is very, very dear to my heart. Some of us, we, we didn't know we could survive certain situations that came our way last year. Some of us were sick to the point of death. And it's just God that helped you. Some of us had challenges that were strong enough to subdue us. And it was just God that gave us the victory. I know there are some people here right now 
you are asking God, how will you handle this sickness in my body? Some of you, you are saying to God, how will I be able to, I mean, handle this challenge at hand? If God could do it for others, he would definitely do your own also. So those people that God came to their rescue last year, and they want to show appreciation to God, it's your turn now to come dancing out. And those that are trusting God to do this, Thanks to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for these, your children. The ones you have delivered from the nets of the fowler. Thank you, Father, for causing the nets to be broken. Thank you for helping these ones to escape. Father, we give thanks to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking that the deliverance you've wrought for them, let it be permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. And for as many that are still having one challenge or the other, that have come out dancing in faith, thanking you in advance for the healing, for the deliverance, for the help, I'm asking my Lord and my Father, because you are the unfailing help in time of need, I pray for these ones. Let their healings come today in the name of Jesus. Let their deliverances come today in the mighty name of Jesus. Let their expected help come today in the name of Jesus. One of the words of prophecy that you spoke to our Father in the Lord is that for many of us, our testimony will be that help arrived on time. I pray for as many as are here, trusting you for help in one form or the other. Let their testimony after today be that help arrive on time. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, eternal Father. We glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory be to God in the year. Glory be to God in the year. Everybody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. because of the envelopes on the altar if you are thinking that way then you better change your mind like i always say to us if we need money and want to raise money i'll come and tell you we want to raise money it is good to give thanks to the lord 
it is good. If you come and you drop an offering before him, God will first accept your person even before having respect on your offering. So if you are coming here with the mind of let's just go and drop it. Once God does not accept you as a person, your offering is useless. So if you must come out at all, understand what you are doing and do whatever you are doing with the right motive. Praise the Lord. The last one, those of us that are in business, go and find out from some people. Last year they will tell you it's a terrible year. Many lost fortunes last year. But there are some of us, God helped you. You broke even last year. Do we have anybody like that here? It is time for you to break. Because, listen to me, the year 2013 is going to be worse than last year. That is the truth. Economically, it's going to be more tough than last year. But the scripture says when others are saying there is a casting down, then you will be saying there is a lifting up. So those of us in business, is our time to come now. Choir. must be about my father's business everybody that god has called to the work of the ministry you have a business you are doing i see some geo standing there praise the lord oh you don't know this is my business i don't have any other business when i wake up in the morning i think of the church i come to my office that is my business center praise the lord thing it is not a common thing for one's church to be growing it is not so i would be a fool not to appreciate god that week in week out people gather in this place there are some people that they, they can't explain what is happening it's not because they don't know how to fast it's not because they don't know how to pray but god have just decided to bless this small boy here so i'll be a fool not to thank god so let, let's just kneel before him and then let's give thanks to god let's give thanks to him again pastor take by day, please come a word of prayer why not just thank god for your business thank god for what he's doing with it thank god for the way he's blessing it even with the least effort of your hands god still brought abundance to you 
Why not just go ahead and give thanks to him? Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Father, we thank you. For the power to make wealth, we give you praise. For new unction in the place of blessings, we thank you. For the souls that gather here week in, week out, we give you glory. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. It is not a common miracle to thrive in the time of economic recessions. But your power has sustained us. Your power has kept us flowing. We thank you. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Everyone giving you thanks sincerely this afternoon. Greater than that of last year. Take us to that height in the name of Jesus. Now this time only to those who are saying a louder amen. Take us to a greater height in the name of Jesus. Greater works than we have ever seen. In the life of your servant this year. And in the work we have committed into his hand in this place. Do in the name of Jesus. Please, I want you to say louder. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody give the Lord praise. Give him praise. Let's go.
are so going to say the grace but this last one is to God we're not asking anybody to come and drop thanksgiving offering for this but for us to give thanks to him and rejoice with those that are concerned if in the past one year you answered the altar call in this place you gave your life to Jesus Jesus saved your soul I just want you to dance and come and appreciate him while the rest of the church will just rejoice with you plus those of us that gave our lives to Christ today can you imagine at the destiny encounter service on Monday 120 what 127 souls and I understand that those people were asked to come today. I think, please, uh, there's going to be a brief meeting with them, uh, certain instruction to be passed across to them. Those that gave their lives to Christ on Monday, you have to meet with the ministers in the reception hall. But for those of us that gave our lives to Christ in the last one year, we want to see you dance before the same altar where God saved you. God bless you. I've never seen this kind God before. <laughs> gratitude to God if God saved you and you are standing there you are saying to him I don't appreciate this salvation some people are crying for this same salvation and God has not given it to them Judas Iscariot cried bitterly and God said no it's over and he hung himself and he went to hell but God came to you and rescued you Dance before him and appreciate. See the enormous benefits that accrue to you because you are now a child of God. Dance and rejoice before him. Hey, I've never seen this kind of God And for those of us that have been saved at one time or the other, why not just lift up your hands to him and say, Father, I thank you for saving my soul. I thank you because I'm no longer an alien to the commonwealth of Israel. I thank you because I now belong in you. I thank you 
Father, I thank you. Thank you for the power that saved me. Thank you for the spirit that saved me. Father, I thank you. Lord, we want to say thank you to you for the work of salvation. We thank you for the wonderful children that you have begotten of yourself even on this altar. Lord, we glorify your name, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for everyone here that have been saved, that, Father, you will keep us all saved till the end. In the mighty name of Jesus, that glorious home, that kingdom that we all look forward to, none of us will miss it in the mighty name of Jesus. At the last trump, Father, when the roll shall be called yonder, every one of us will hear our name being called in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. And for all the things you've done in our midst today, Father, we return all the glory to you. And as we go from here, we ask that the spirit of rejoicing will go ahead of us. The spirit of fulfillment will come behind us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty Father. We glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And may we all set the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And for as many of us as are not tired of God and receiving from Him, there's going to be an all night here on Friday. It's going to be an all night of power. God bless you as you come. It starts at 10 in the night. Quiet. You are worthy, O oh Lord.